Hey everyone, it's Richard, CEO of Altfins. In this trading video, I'll do a technical analysis of Bitcoin, BTC. I'll take a look at the current trends, uh, support and resistance areas, maybe some swing trading opportunities, entry levels, exit levels. We'll take a look at the spot BTC ETF net flows and what those are telling us about the demand uh, for Bitcoin from institutional buyers. And we'll also take a look at uh, the bearish and bullish or the death and golden crosses um, and the history uh, in the last two years uh, for Bitcoin as well. So um, currently on the screener, you can find a technical analysis for about 60 of the top altcoins um, under the screener. That's one option. So in the details under the technical analysis tab, uh, you can find the trade setup, what the pattern is, trend, momentum. You can also blow up the actual technical analysis uh, that includes the support resistance areas, any patterns that we have de detected and so on. Uh, these you can also find under the technical analysis section. Right here, you can also then Sort them by bullish, bearish, or any particular pattern type that you like to trade as well. Uh, so this is just one of the tools that Altfins offers uh, to traders to find some trading ideas quickly. Of course, there's uh, AI-generated chart patterns and the screener uh, filters as well. But here we go. Um, by the way, we, the hot trades that we have here indicated with this flame icon are those where we have a higher level of conviction um, and and so uh, we label those as hot uh, but all the trades here the trade setups here are still I think very useful particularly for beginner traders who are looking to also learn how to do technical analysis which for which I also recommend uh, trying our uh, 10 lessons uh, education course but let's go ahead and dive into uh, Bitcoin Okay, first of all, as you may see under the chart, live chart here, the trend is decisively down on the short term, medium term, and long term basis. The short term trend tends to um, change quickly, so I don't uh, regard it uh, as much. I don't use it that much, but the medium and the long term, I certainly take a look at, particularly the medium trend, I think is a trend that's uh, it's uh, relatively well established, but not um, too old, not overly mature. And, and it is currently down, um, not surprisingly, since price is trading below the 200 day moving average, as you can see, right? Um, and that's typically an indication of a downtrend. Uh, right here in, in our technical analysis, the 200 day moving average is designated in the purple color. And as you can see, the price has been kind of going sideways, gradually downward ever since it shot up in, you know, since the beginning or really since late 2023, um, it peaked sometime in March, uh, late March 2024. And it's been kind of a, you know, really hit a resistance zone at 72,000 several times. Uh, couldn't really uh, break it and sustain it. Uh, there's a lot of supply, a lot of sellers around that level, and, and it just uh, faded from there. And like I said, it broke below the 200-day moving average, which is um, um, an indication of a downtrend as well. Now, uh, from a trading perspective, I'd say the $50,000 level um, has a long history of being either a resistance area or a support area. Right, and this is a concept uh, known as polarity, um, a level that's resistance acting like a resistance where a lot of the sellers, um, you know, come out and and the price just can't get through that level. Well, that was fifty thousand dollars for a while. Once you break through the resistance, that resistance becomes now support level. And we've seen seen that here, right? It it was a support level in July, support level in August, and again just recently. Five days ago, it was a support level that has held and the price has bounced up from that level. Um, so 
that fifty to fifty-two thousand dollar support area or zone uh, seems to be a solid swing entry, swing, swing trade entry opportunity. So that's where I would be a buyer. Um, and and you know now with the the price around fifty seven thousand dollars, it's approaching the sixty thousand dollar resistance. So I'm not from a trading perspective now. Uh, I'm not uh, I'm not I wouldn't be buying it here. Um, I would be again waiting for those dips to fifty thousand. Um, you know for the trend to really turn around or reverse from downtrend to uptrend, we really need the price to see, see the price break back above the $60,000, but also above the $64,000. Oops, sorry about that. Above the $64,000 200-day moving average, right? We saw a failed breakout here in early September. It, uh, it poked its head above the 200-day the moving average, but then uh, then just pulled back. That was a failed breakout. So really, from a trend reversal perspective, we've got a little ways to go uh, before we can uh, before we can say that Bitcoin is back in an uptrend. Um, and so the other uh, thing to take a look at is uh, the death cross, as I mentioned earlier in the opening remarks. Uh, what is the death and golden cross? Um, let's take a look at this chart right here. For now, we can disregard the RSI and the MACD indicators. Let's just take a look at the price and the moving averages. What we have here, and let's blow this up to maybe six months, okay? is um, what uh, we're looking at here, what, what is what is a, a death cross? Death cross is typically when a 50-day moving average, which is the orange line here, 50-day moving average crosses below the 200-day moving average, and that's what happened here. When that happens, typically that's, again, another indication of a downtrend, and a signal that we may be in a downtrend for a longer period of time. Now, when we look at a longer, longer time horizon here, let's just say this is since the beginning of 2022. And so uh, just over, let's say, two and a half years, right? Um, let's Actually, let's look at the trading view chart and blow this up. Okay, we can even pull a longer uh, history here. Let's just start from 2021, get rid of the RSI. Now we just have the price. Again, the moving average, the 50 day moving average is the light blue. Let's see, light blue, let's give it uh, a thicker, thicker line so it's more visible. And the dark blue here, also make, let's make it thicker, okay? So the light blue is the 50 day moving average, the darker blue is the 200 day moving average. So when the price breaks, Below the 200-day moving average, that's a death cross, okay? When we look at this death cross right here that happened in early 2022, I mean, that was followed by precipitous decline with small rallies in Bitcoin for really the next well, whole year, from January 2022 to January or February 2023. Right. I mean, we hit the bottom at the end of 2022 when the FTX exchange blow up and so on. But so this death cross was definitely an accurate signal. 
uh, when you really look at what happened after that, this is where the 50-day moving average broke back above the 200-day moving average. That's a golden cross. And indeed, that was followed by a pretty solid rise in Bitcoin. And there was a short period of time when there was some indecision here. There was a death cross followed shortly by that, uh, followed shortly by uh, a golden cross. And then after that golden cross, you know, we had a massive run in Bitcoin from just under 30,000 to 72,000. So it was a over 100% gain, right? But most recently, the signal is bearish. We had a, a bearish death uh, crossover, a 50 day versus the 200 day moving average crossover. So, um, as much as I like to be bullish on Bitcoin at the moment, the signals. Um, are, are bearish. Now, you know, we might be in for a, a short correction and we'll reverse that, um, which would be great. But for now, the signals are bearish. So, um, you know, at this point, I think there's some swing trading opportunities, as I mentioned, uh, when price dips to 50,000. Obviously, we need to use uh, a reasonable stop loss level. So if I think that I'm buying it at 50,000 on the next dip or even 52,000, let's just, let's just say, because it's zone 50 to 52,000, and I think that it can bounce back to 60,000. So that's you know, about an $8,000 um, potential gain. Then I'd say my stop loss would be at around 48,000, about half of that, half of my gain, I would be willing to have, and that would basically be a risk to reward ratio of two to one. I'm risking 4,000 for a potential gain of 8,000, right? Or I'm gaining potential 8,000 versus risking potential 4,000. So if I'm buying it at 52,000 with the assumption that the price target is 60,000, then my stop loss would be at 48,000. So that those are the swing trading opportunities at this point. Again, it's a higher risk trade because it is against the overall trend. Typically, especially for beginners, you know, we advise or, or it is generally um, advised and recommended that um, traders should trade with the trend. Trend is your friend, meaning don't trade against the trend. So in this case, if I'm buying it at 50, 52,000, that would be trading against the trend, right? And so that would be a higher risk trade setup because it, against, it is against the trade, uh, a trend. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spot Bitcoin ETF net flows, right? Since the launch of over 10 different ETF or electronically traded funds um, like the BlackRock, Fidelity, and others, uh, there's been a fair amount of buying driven by the these particular funds. Um, and as we could see on in this chart, this chart shows the net flows, right? There's an, any given day, there are money that's being invested or added to these funds, which is then used to buy Bitcoin, or it's been withdrawn from these funds in which case these funds have to sell Bitcoin to satisfy the withdrawal requests. And in, <clears throat> in this chart, as you can see, since the beginning of the year, that there were a lot of buying uh, and positive net flows, you know, 500 million, even um, as much as a billion dollars that uh, was added uh, to these funds, which was used to buy Bitcoin. And, and this, you know, this period of time, the first quarter or first three months of 2024 is when Bitcoin was rising. Still, really, this is when it hit its peak somewhere around uh, this point in mid-March at $72,000. So clearly, there is some correlation and there is some uh, fair amount of demand uh, and buying, uh, um, buying pressure coming from these institutional funds or ETFs. And after that, you know, the picture is mixed uh, to down, right? I mean, it's it's up and down. So the, the thick uh, black 
line here is basically zero. So anything below that is, is withdrawals or minus or negative flows and positive flows are above the zero. As you can see, since mid-March, um, the net flows were sometimes in the positive, sometimes in the negative, more or less um, about even and, and really more recently more negative than positive. And that corresponds with the price action as well. So certainly to some extent, the price action is driven by the demand from these funds as well. Of course, then that could be driven by macro events, by the macroeconomic events, by what the Fed uh, central bank in the US is doing or planning to do. Uh, but the bottom line is, um, you know, in the last, really since mid-March in the last six months, the buying from these funds uh, has been weak uh, to actually uh, more recently um, there's been more, more more withdrawals than than uh, net inflows more outflows than inflows all right everyone well again um, we've got 60 or so or actually more than 60 trade setups um, that are updated refreshed daily in the technical analysis section these cover uh, a number of the top 100 altcoins out there. Um, I think it's a great starting point for your uh, trade idea search or discovery process. Um, keep in mind that this video was for information purposes only, not meant to be financial advice and do your own research. Good luck trading.